The St. Louis Cardinals just had one of their worst months in the history of the franchise. And today we're going to take a look at the minor league side of this organization to see if maybe, just maybe, there's some help on the way in the near future. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. We want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals and Locked On MLB Prospects your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We're all over the place, including YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. That way you can interact with us. Be sure to hit the notification button so you know when new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode being brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So the St. Louis Cardinals have been one of the biggest surprises in baseball this year, but for all of the wrong reasons, they have one of the worst records in the league. They can't seem to hit. They can't seem to pitch or field all that well either. And fans are pretty much freaking out. And when things go bad at the major league level, we start looking at how things are going down in the minor leagues to see if perhaps there's anything coming up through the system that might be able to help turn things around. And to do that today, we've got Locked On MLB Prospects host, Lindsey Crosby joining us to hopefully give us some good news on what's <laughs> happening in this organization. Hello, Lindsey. How are you doing? With 120 minor league teams, there's always somebody who's winning, so I'm not as concerned about it. But uh, I, I I have been paying a lot of attention to this Cardinals team and, and been su- as surprised as everybody else has about what's going on. So I'm excited to do this one today. Yeah, um, there's plenty of places we could start because there's been a lot of problems at the major league level, but... Let's go with the pitching because that's what people are most upset about. Uh, the Cardinals pitching staff hasn't been great outside mm-hmm. of Jordan Montgomery, who's uh, pitched very well recently. Jack Flaherty's starting to kind of look like he used to be. Miles Michaelis has been a little bit better recently, but Steven Matz has been awful. Jake Woodford has not been good. Massive disappointment so far. Um, what down on the farm do Cardinals fans have to look forward to? Uh, as far as prospects who might be able to help them this year, Lindsay. Uh, So the everydayers will remember me talking about this guy because I've done it a couple times now, but I think that some of the improvements we've seen this year from Matthew Liebertor means that he could have a better result in MLB this year than he has in the past. I know the stats haven't always been great. He had a ERA of almost six in his seven starts last year, Uh, but so far this year in Memphis, six starts, three and one record, two one four ERA in thirty three and two thirds innings. But the big thing to me that's been different, uh, what I've noticed is he's got forty five strikeouts. So it's twelve strikeouts per nine. His previous high in the like in AAA was nine strikeouts per nine, so barely one per inning. And I think some of this goes back to when you look at what. Uh, at what he's able to do with the fastball. His velocity is up on the fastball. He's added about a mile and a half per hour on the fastball from last year. So now it solidly averages 95. He's touched 97, 98 with it. Uh, And this is the four seamer, obviously. But I think that's the big issue. When you go back and you look at his starts last year in MLB and what didn't work, it was the fastball. He gave up a 351 batting average on the fastball with a 649 slugging. And so the fact that he's able to get more swings and misses on that fastball than he used to be able to, uh, combined with the fact that the curveball still looks very good, has um, has a little bit more than 16 inches of drop. It used to, it, last year it had about 15 or so, as well as still having some of that horizontal movement. I think the fastball curveball combination uh, gives him a chance to have a better ERA than he had last year and to provide better innings, definitely than what Steven Matz or Woodford could give you right now. 
Yeah, and it hasn't been great. And obviously, Woodford got pushed up into the rotation because Adam Wainwright got hurt. Uh, he's set to come back here real soon. Just had mm-hmm. his uh, third rehab start uh, down at Memphis. And um, he's going to be back soon. So Woodford will probably be kicked out. But there's thoughts that maybe Steven Matz needs to be moved to the bullpen, too, because he just hasn't been good. And it would be nice to have another lefty like Libertor to, to come back in. Um this year, and you mentioned this in the in the beginning, in the offseason leading up to, to this year, that uh, a, a name, Max Freed, was a guy that you kind of compared what Libertor had as far as his repertoire and about this might be the year that he starts to start, you know, really figure things out was that mm-hmm. age 25 year, which is how Freed did it as well. We didn't want to give people false hope that, hey, he's the next Max Freed, get ready. But <laughs> there are similarities there that, that should have you excited. Yeah, the the two-seamer has been a better weapon for him last year than it's been in the past. Uh, Something, again, you have have the four-seam fastball with that better lefty velocity running up to 97 or so. You have the big drop on the curveball. You have the two-seamer to help induce ground balls. He does have a gyro slider as well that he kind of uses against lefties, which is a thing that Freed doesn't really throw. Uh, But Freed has a better changeup than Libertor. It's, it's a similar pitch mix. When I go back and I watch some of these Memphis games, I watched, I believe I watched Memphis versus Gwinnett. Uh, it, it, it looked, it reminded me a lot, even more so than it did when we talked in the offseason, about uh, how a Max Freed approached the game. I do feel like Libertor's control has gotten a little bit better. And the walk numbers right now, I think he's got 12 walks in those 33 innings, so about 3.2 per nine. Kind of in line with uh, with what he did in AAA last year. A little bit lower than what he did in the bigs last year. But it does feel, just from watching, that he is able to hit the spots better. And I do think right now that's probably your best option as far as immediate improvement is mm-hmm. getting him back, getting Wainwright back, and moving Mats to the bullpen. Yeah, that's something that, that they might do. I, I We don't know. You know, this uh, this team tends to stick next to their veterans a little longer than most people would like. So uh, we'll see if that's something that is an option uh, moving forward. How about another first round pick? Let's talk about Michael McGreevy. How's he holding up so far this year? So he, he's got one start in Memphis. He got moved up from from double A and looked very good in double A. One, four, five ERA crosses three starts, 18 innings. So he's going about six innings a start. You like that Uh, 16 strikeouts. So only 7.7 per nine in double a, but he walked one guy in those, in those 18 innings. So you feel good about that. Didn't didn't give up any home runs. I caught his game against Durham, his first start in triple a six innings, uh, five strikeouts, two walks. uh, But he only got a 25% uh, CSW. So call strikes plus whiffs. Uh, It's something where, He, you know, the sinker slider combination has kind of always been his bread and butter. I feel like he's not missing enough bats with the fastball. And so it's something where I know that, that he's probably not going to get called up right now because he is just getting to to AAA for the first time. But I feel like he needs a little bit more work on, yes, everything's geared around the slider, but he needs to do a little more work about making sure he keeps that fastball down because when he leaves it up, that's when it gets crushed. We saw Durham hit do, hit him around a couple times. Uh, and, and so a little bit of work there. I do see the promise. I do think the slider's gotten better than it was last year. The tunnel, they, they tunnel a little bit better as well. Uh, the big thing here is going to be, can he get better command of the changeup? That's going to be the third pitch. Because when you because the, the curveball and the slider... They don't blend together, but they have a similar uh, visual picture for the batter. You know, they, they, they come out of the same slot. They have the same type of movement. The curveball just does it more. And so if he can get the the changeup, if he can command the changeup more reliably, I think he's going to be an option probably later in the year. I wouldn't call him up now, but I do think that he is getting better and he is going to be an option in the future just based on that. Uh, what he did in Springfield and that first start he did against Durham, which is a tough draw for anybody in their first start in AAA. Uh, One of the guys that people started to learn about at the end of last year, and especially in spring training, uh, because before the season started, he was actually the Cardinals' number one pitching prospect uh, ahead of of Libertor was Gordon Graceffo. And uh, Gordon, we saw him at spring training. Um, How's he been looking so far? And uh, how how are we looking on on his path to the major leagues? Because people were pretty excited about him in the the fall. 
Yeah, so he's he's come on a little bit rocky in in AAA, and some of that's just kind of been the walks. He's walked ten guys in his twenty two innings. So his ERA sits about four nine one. He's one and two right now across his five starts. Uh, he's given up three home runs, which feels like a little bit more than I would have expected based on his stuff. The fastball, I think, is the culprit for this. Uh, it's the velocity is good. He I mean, it's, it sits around ninety five. He can run it up to ninety nine. The issue that I have, and you made a good uh, comparison before we turned the the mics on, it reminds me a lot of Hunter Green's fastball with the Reds when he came up last year. He's got great velocity, but it's pretty straight. It's pretty, mm. it's pretty straight. It's pretty flat. And so because of that, it's solely a timing issue. It doesn't move from where you expect it to be. It is right where you expect it to be. As long as you can time it, you can hit it. Uh, that is something that can be fixed. We saw the Reds send down Hunter Green last year when they brought him back up. He had more movement on that fastball. He had some he had some ride to it. He had some life to it, and it made it miss bats a little better. Uh, but the 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 fastball slider changeup combination, I think, is very good. I wish he could get the curveball a little better. That's the fourth pitch, but I think even that's a pretty a pretty good curveball. It's a vertical breaking curveball, which I love that, and so. Four pitch mix. Uh, the command is really good. I just want the fastball to move a little better. He he has a higher ceiling to me now than he did uh, when I looked at him last year, mm. simply because of one the improved velocity, but then two how the secondaries he's get, he gets decent de- deception on all of them, and so he legitimately has four options that are going to do different movements. It's just a question of the main one that you throw the most, the fastball, you've got to make it move a little more. Yeah, because uh, when you get up to the major league level, I don't care if you're throwing 103. If it's straight as an arrow, they're going to hit it. That's just the exactly. way it is. They're, that's how good these guys are. So uh, having some sort of ride on the fastball or some cut, uh, just something to make it move just a little bit, <laughs> it, it can make all the difference when it comes to uh, how these pitchers get hit up at the at the big leagues. Uh, how about uh, Connor Thomas? A lot of people fell in love with him during the Arizona Fall League where he was the pitcher of the year. Uh, we saw him at spring training. How's he looking so far? So he's he's struggled a bit uh, th- in Memphis, and a big part of that is just the swing and miss stuff. He's not necessarily missing a ton of bats. So uh, five three three ERA in twenty seven innings, three and one record. Really interesting, kind of how the the run supports worked out for these guys. Yeah. But only twenty strikeouts, so about six point seven per nine. Uh, it's something where the fastball velocity is just not there. He, like he's he's your definition of that pitch ability lefty. He has a bunch of pitches. None of them are necessarily amazing, right? Uh, I would say the slider is probably only one that has that that is close to being above average. Uh, but when he can mix them in really well, and when he can sequence really well, which he's been good at doing historically, uh, that's when he's able to to to. Uh, keep the ERA down, keep the runs off the board because he's got the four-seamer, the two-seamer, the change-up, the cutter to go along with the slider. It's just uh, he, he doesn't miss a ton of bats. And so if he's off, he's going to get rocked. And and I still don't necessarily know if I think he's going to make it as a starting pitcher or if he's going to end up being a swingman out of the bullpen or a long or a, you know, a long relief kind of guy. If you could add two miles an hour velocity on that fastball, I'd feel a little bit better about him at least being a number five. But right now that's just kind of, it's, it's one of those, there's, I, I want to say I've seen that fastball 90, 91, maybe touching 93 on occasion. And it's just Mm. not enough velocity to be, to be effective at the major league level as a starting pitcher. So probably not an option uh, uh, right away. As far as I got to call up and have good, uh, good expectations for, but the tools are there. There's still multiple pitches. He's got good control. He sequences it well. Just makes something a little bit better. All right. Well, there's a quick snapshot at what's going on pitching wise with the team. We're going to uh, focus on the hitters down in the minor leagues next. Uh, we'll be talking uh, a little bit about Jordan Walker, who is now back down in the minor leagues. So uh, stick around. We'll get to all of that next here on Locked on Cardinals. Now, buying tickets to your favorite event has been a stressful thing for you. 
stop making it that way. What you need to do is be a part of game time. It's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your, your sports, your music, your comedy, theater, anything that you're interested in that you actually have to buy a ticket to. Game time makes things a lot easier for you with great deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting excited for the fun you're about to have. You don't have to plan in advance because game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, exclusive flash deals on tickets for all your favorite sporting events. Doesn't have to be just baseball. We're talking football, basketball, uh, hockey, concerts, comedy, all of it. The game time guarantee means that you're always going to get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section and same row for less, game time isn't going to let that slide. They're going to credit you 110% of the difference. Tickets then get sent right directly to your phone so you never have to dig through the email trying to find where the heck those things went. They go right to your phone and you just you just pull up the app and they're sitting there waiting for you. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Just don't download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code locked on MLB. That's going to hook you up with $20 off on your first purchase, saving you money already. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're also being presented by our new sponsor, So Rare, a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace that transforms fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Uh, what's great about So Rare is unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, uh, the So Rare managers, you actually own your, your fantasy experience. You collect, you buy, you sell, and compete with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards and win or lose, you still get to keep your cards. They don't just vanish and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next level competitions and rewards. I haven't had the best of luck with So Rare so far because maybe I'm just a terrible So Rare manager. Lindsay, on the other hand, is, is a So Rare master pulling gold cards and stuff these days. Lindsay, what's your secret, dude? Uh, honestly, for me, it's been you're picking, uh, uh, you know, a, a team of of seven players, one, you know, one corner infielder, one middle infielder. It's all about knowing the matchups, saying, mm -hmm. OK, hey, Shohei Otani is going to be facing off against the Oakland A's. I'm going to make sure I have him in my lineup. Max <laughs> Muncie has four games, whereas, you know, Spencer Steer only has three. Let's make sure we get Max Muncie in the lineup and just kind of maximizing those matchups. As yeah. you play every single game, you'll get more cards. So you have more options to play in these different. And every time you use them in a competition, they earn bonus points so that the next time you play, they're even better. I had a top 20 finish last week out of 4,000 people in the game week. And so uh, kind of exciting. It's a fun game. It really is. <laughs> It's good when you win, just like most sports, you know? <laughs> and when you win, as uh, Lindsay mentioned, uh, you've got scarcity cards, game tickets, merchandise, signed jerseys, VIP experiences where you can meet MLB stars. These are things that you can win, and you don't have to pay for it. So rare.com slash locked on. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E.com. Draft your team of free player cards. Set your lineup. Start competing today to win those epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today. The Cardinals begin a new series at home against guys that Lindsey was just talking about. Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, the Angels. They're, they're playing at Bush Stadium tonight, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Uh, for my everydayers out there, we want to thank you guys for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every single day. Obviously, we'll have a, a recap of what happens tonight at Bush Stadium. We'll see if the Cardinals can, can get right because they've struggled. Uh, we mentioned the, the pitching at the beginning of the show and heading has also been a problem, something that we didn't see coming. Really. We thought if there was one thing <laughs> that you could really bank on when it came between hitting, starting pitching and wrote in uh, the bullpen, the hitting was supposed to be fine. And it hasn't been there. There's been issues galore up and down this lineup. So people are wondering, okay, is there anybody down in the minor leagues that might be able to spark this offense a little bit? Cause they badly need it. Uh, one of the first names people want to talk about, Lindsay, is Mason Wynn. How has Mason Wynn started his career at the AAA level? So there's been good and bad. Uh, uh, right now, 27 games, 224, 291, 319. Uh, he's got six extra base hits. Two of those are home runs. Uh, 10 walks to 29 strikeouts. The strikeout rate, something I've been, uh, I was kind of watching. 
He didn't have a bad strikeout rate last year. I want to say it was something like a 21%, a little bit higher in AAA, a little bit of an adjustment period. And then the big thing I've noticed is the power hasn't really come in like I expected. One of the big improvements that we talked about in 2022 for Mason Wynn was he he raised that that uh that average launch angle because he he retooled the swing to get some more loft in there. It's not necessarily showing up as much in AAA, and I think part of that is just adjusting to the better pitchers. And it's still when you watch the the, the pitch selection is is I think part of the issue. It's getting better even over just these what three weeks or so. It's just a matter of him kind of seeing these pitchers, seeing the better stuff. He, th- there's a lot more veteran pitchers in, in AAA who uh, aren't necessarily standard prospects. They're more there as quad A guys or veteran depth for the major league team. Uh, so he has gotten better from the beginning of the season to now. Uh, I have, I mean, he, I have been impressed with how proficient he's been on the base pass. He's eight to nine on steals, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so he's on pace to be better in AAA this year than he was in double a last year. I want to say he was thrown out five times in 33 attempts last year. And right now we start out one and nine. So uh, he's getting better at steals. He's adjusting to triple a. I wouldn't say he's ready to come up right now as far as an offensive standpoint, but I do, I have been really impressed with the growth I've seen even just over this three weeks uh, with him getting better uh, in at bats, getting better from game to game and from week to week. And one of the things at the major league level is there's no place for Mason Wynn to go right now because you've got Paul DeYoung, who has been a pleasant surprise since uh, they called him back up, uh, has looked really good at the plate so far. You still got Tommy Edmond, you still got Brendan Donovan and Nolan Gorman. Those are your four guys up the middle. There's nowhere for Mason Wynn to go. So it's uh, he's going to spend this year at AAA. Uh, I would be shocked if he's ever up before the very end of the season this year. Yeah. I mean, it would have to take a trade or a couple of injuries, injuries or anything. Yeah. For him to even sniff the major leagues this year. So that's not something that, uh, you know, the Cardinals are, are probably going to be utilizing, but uh, a name that some people were surprised got sent down at the beginning of the year. Juan Yepes. Juan Yepes is a guy that um, can play both corner infield spots, can play both corner outfield spots, but again, Log jam in the outfield. Not a lot of places for him to go. Uh, with Gorman taking over the DH spot and doing so well there, really no need to bring him in there. So he's been down at AAA. But people have been wondering if he's somebody who could come up soon and maybe add a jolt to this offense. How has Juan Yepes been? Yeah, so 246, 317, 491. I would, I'd love the batting average and on base to be a little bit better. Uh, I think last year in AAA, he, he was batting close to 280, 340. Uh, so a little bit of an adjustment there. I do think it's interesting that Taylor Motter got the call over him. Uh, that yeah. was a big thing to me. That To me, that kind of felt like it was more of, of a positional versatility thing. But yeah. that was telling that management doesn't necessarily think that he's ready, which is obviously kind of frustrating. Uh, something where his best, spark, his best spot obviously would be DH. But like you said, Nolan Gorman's there right now. Uh, he could play a little bit of of outfield at probably in a below average level, but there's a million outfielders already. The fact that, yeah. you, that you didn't have room to keep a, a defensively struggling Jordan Walker kind of is telling. And so like that's the story of almost this entire AAA team is like everybody that you look at that would be an option. There's a guy at the major league level that it, you can't take them out. You can't, yeah. you know. Like as, as much as Nolan Arenado struggled, you can't take Nolan Arenado out to put Juan Yepes in. Uh, you yeah. know, Goldschmidt's Goldschmidt. You're not going to bench the Cy Young w- winner, and and Gorman's hitting at the DH. And so, you know, how do you fit him in the lineup? I don't know. I think that he could help, but the decision to bring up Motter over him explains they don't see positionally where they can get him playtime. Yeah, and it's kind of put the Cardinals like they're playing really shorthanded because there's nowhere to put Motter either, and you're not going to bring up somebody who needs at bats to come sit on the very end of the bench and just rot. So that's why Motter was was brought up instead of some of these guys. Now talking about some of the players that uh, you know don't have a position but have actually been doing well at Memphis, we just have nowhere to put him on the major league level. Is a guy by the name of Luke and Baker who fans got to watch in spring training, a massive man, but. Again, Paul Goldschmidt, your first baseman. So the only other spot you're going to put Luke and Baker is at DH. And he's got some firepower down there at Memphis. I just don't know 
if they can bring him up because they have nowhere to play him. But he's been looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Uh, in that 26 games, 318, 450, 716. He's the only guy in Memphis with double digit home runs. He's got 10 home runs, 1165 OPS, struck out 27 times in 26 games, which would be concerning, but he's walked 21 times. So, I mean, he's he, he's doing just about everything offensively that he can do to help your team. The issue you have is, like you said, uh, you can't play him at first with Goldschmidt there. And I mean, he had, uh, he is well below average defensively at first base. Like his options are first base and DH and that's it. And even at first base, you're sacrificing defense to have him. So uh, 6'4", 265, he's pretty much confined to solely DH. And unless you find a place to put Nolan Gorman in the field, which we saw last year, what that can do to your defense and, and some of the trade-offs you have to make, you're in a scenario where there's really no place to put Baker uh, in your major league roster. It's another scenario where, like, what do you do? I mean, I I guess you can make trades with some of these guys, whether you want to move some offensive pieces, maybe you want to move an outfielder at the major league level. I don't quite know what you do, but you've got you the, the pieces you have in Memphis that are working right now, there's not a place for them at the big league level. And then the pieces that aren't working in Memphis are some of the pitchers that aren't quite ready. The only real obvious change to make to me feels like Matthew Libertor into the rotation. Other than that, it's kind of tough to figure out where can we fit these guys in the lineup since uh, Nolan Gorman's hitting so well. And my fantasy team does appreciate that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's been outstanding to watch. His uh, new approach to the plate, he's not striking out as much. He's not chasing that high fastball. It's been great. He's been one of the few bright spots on this team uh, so far. Uh, coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk a little bit about Jordan Walker, uh, after he got sent down, what what he's been doing. And I also want to bring up a, a guy that led the minor leagues at home runs last year, Moises Gomez. Kind of a slow start for him. Was he a flash in the pan? We'll get to the bottom of it here next on Locked on Cardinals. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and changing. You know, you're, you're not the same person you were in high school as you were in college. And then after college is over, you're not that same person anymore. You're changing all the time. You learn, you make mistakes, you live, you grow inside and out. And therapy is one of those things that's all about deepening your self-awareness and, and your understanding. Because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way we do. Why do we want to throw shoes at the television when, uh, you know, somebody strikes out on the Cardinals offense? Why do we feel that way? Well, until we, will, we, we talk things through, maybe you don't know. And it's always nice to have someone there just to listen, and that's where BetterHelp can benefit you. It connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are, whether it's a good place or a bad place. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's designed to be flexible, and it's suited to your schedule, which is the one of the tough things about trying to find somebody to talk to is because people are busy, but BetterHelp, very flexible for you, and you can discover your potential with BetterHelp. Just visit them at betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MLB. The Cardinals are back home against the Angels tonight with Steven Matz on the bump. He hasn't been very good this year, but if there's one positive, maybe going into this game is the fact that the Angels are throwing a left-hander as well, who the Cardinals normally hit pretty darn good. Pablo Sandoval will be on the hill for them, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. A move that was recently made that had a lot of people scratching their heads was... Top prospect Jordan Walker getting sent down to Memphis. Now, when it happened, I understood the disappointment from fans because he actually had been producing decently at the major league level. And for a team that isn't winning, that is struggling offensively, people were like, why are they sending him down? He doesn't seem to be the problem. The problem with Jordan Walker being on the major league level is that you had four guys that were getting more at-bats than him, and he was getting squeezed out of the lineup. There was no way for him to go. and he was hitting a lot of ground balls. That seemed to be a problem. They want him to get more lift. They want him to utilize that big 6'6", 245-pound frame to be launching balls off the wall, not hitting ground balls that find a hole on the infield. So they sent him down to Memphis, and they bring Taylor Motter up, which Lindsay and I just spoke a, a few moments ago about how that was more of a, 
a flexibility role where Modder can play multiple positions where other guys that like Luke and Baker, if you were going to bring them up, you can only go one spot. <laughs> so that's why Modder got brought up instead. But Jordan Walker goes down to Memphis. How has he looked so far, Lindsay, since playing in AAA for the first time, mind you? People forget that he never went past AA last year. Yeah, I mean, r- right now, the, the batting average isn't great. It's a small sample size. He's played in four games. I think he has, yeah. he has three hits in his four games, does have a home run. But the big thing to me is you're working on the, on the launch angle. He's got to get balls in the air. And you see... Super like superstar players go through this from time to time. Ronald Acuna Jr. right now is hitting over half his balls on the ground. And so the conversation going into the season for him was he's a 40-40 type season guy and he's behind pace on home runs because he's hitting balls on the ground. That's mm-hmm. something that can be fixed with more experience, especially with seeing how they adjust to you and they're throwing you a lot of break and knowing when you can go down and get one and lift it. The bigger thing to me when I've watched Jordan Walker has been the defense. Honestly, he's not been charged with an error, but when you watch him out there, he's not doing very well defensively. And if you think about it, he's not really played. You mentioned it. He's barely been above. Like it's his first time being above double a is being in the bigs. And he's played a grand total of 29 games in the outfield before this season. And so, yes, he played some, he played some right and center in the Arizona fall league. And he looked good at in flashes, But when he's been facing uh, uh, top hitters and some of what they can do as far as backspinning the ball or or, uh, uh, just crushing the crap out of it, he hasn't necessarily had the best uh, reads and reactions off of the ball. The routes have been okay, but it's just the initial read of where the ball is going and the first step to uh, to get to that ball have not been crisp. So I think at the moment, defensively, he's not one of your four best outfielders. And so if he's not able to consistently put the ball in the air and give you what you need him to do from a a power and a hitting standpoint, I understand the decision to move him down to AAA, let him spend some time there. Now, my fantasy team doesn't love it. I drafted him in redraft thinking he was going to kill it this year. And I think I took him first in our Rookie of the Year draft. But uh, it's just, I get it. He's already done a little bit of, of work in the minors as far as trying to fix that launch angle and, and getting more experience defensively. I think you'll see him up sometime this year. I don't know if it's going to take a trade, an injury, a slump, what it's going to take, but I do think you'll see him eventually. The, the prospect pedigree is still there. We haven't downgraded him because he didn't look great in the outfield. Uh, we still see him as a top 25 prospect in baseball. Yeah, and and the thing is, is like when a 20-year-old should not – be working on things at the major league level. Again, it's a, he's a young yeah. player, bright future. Everybody's excited about him. He wasn't demoted because he stinks. That's not what this was. It was more of the fact that there's just things he he can be better on, and it's better to get him a lot of at-bats down at AAA instead of having him hit every two or three days at the major league level against top-notch pitching. You know, these are the mm-hmm. best in the world. So it just didn't make a lot of sense. So it was the best move for for Jordan and for the team, I think for the, for the future of this organization to, to send him down, let him work on these things at Memphis. And uh, again, I'm sure we will see him back up at the major league level at some time this season, but the way this team looks, there's no need to rush him because <laughs> they still got to figure out what they're doing with their own outfielders. Cause they still yeah. have no clue who they want to start each and every day. And you mentioned how Jordan Walker was, you know, struggling defensively and he's not one of your top four defensive outfielders. And this is a team that watches, Alec Burleson playing the outfield day to day (laughs) and he's not great. He kind of gets the job done, but he's not all that. He looks like a softball player out there trying to figure things out, but that's where this organization is right now. Uh, One of the names that people were excited to see, could he do it for two years in a row was Moises Gomez outfielder led the minor leagues in home runs last year was just smashing the ball over the, all over the place at double a, goes up to AAA, does the same thing. And people are wondering, like, did we find a, a little diamond in the rough here? Saw him in spring training, no home runs. People got concerned. He's now down in the minor leagues. Things haven't gotten much better, have they, Lindsay? 220, 263, 330 mm-hmm. in 23 games. He's got one home run, seven extra base hits. Mm-hmm. And we've seen some of the issues crop back up from his 2021 season. So he was with, I mean, reminder for everybody, he was with the Rays, and they released him. 
I mean, it wasn't like, you know, they, they said we're done. And so uh, it was a lot of strikeouts. We saw the strikeouts continue last year, but he was able to get the ball in the air enough to make up for it. He had a 705 slugging in double A Springfield. He had a 541 in Memphis. He did strike out 174 times. So like, you know, even in the strikeout rate was still up this year, the strikeout rates come down at 27 strikeouts in 23 games, but the power production's not there. And the contact has backed up a little bit. So again, 220 batting average, 263 on base. So I uh, need to see him walk a little bit more, need to see him just get better quality contact. Uh, and, and, and from there, if that all of that happens, then you have the question of, okay, well then now where do we put him defensively? Uh, is it something where he he's, he could be a right fielder? He could be a DH. Um, mm-hmm. So even when you do get that figured out, it's still another situation of, well, where do we play him at that point? Because we have so many other options. It really feels like there's going to be a couple of these guys get moved at some point for pitching. I don't know if it's going to be off the minor league roster, off the major league roster, a combination of both. My my thought process would be a major league outfielder and then probably one of these minor league infield DH guys as a power, mm. as a source of power, but I don't quite know. But at the moment, Moises Gomez needs to rebuild some of that draft stock that you had in him after his great year last year so that he is an option to get moved at the deadline. And, and that's, again, granted, this is the beginning of May, but a lot of the stock in a lot of these players that this offseason might have been up here has all fallen down because a lot of them are struggling. And I'm talking about the major league guys, too. Like, what, what do you think you're going to mm-hmm. get for a Tyler O'Neill or a Dylan Carlson right now when they're not doing anything? Like, they're they're at the very bottom of their worth right now. Their trade value has plummeted. And... Now you're stuck. <laughs> and then in the minor leagues for, for guys that you might want to call up, none of them are very good defensively anyway. And uh, none of them are really all hitting that great either. So it's a, uh, it's a bad spot to be in for the Cardinals here again, one month into the season. And uh, yeah, we're all freaking out because the Cardinals aren't used to losing like this and not having these kind of problems, but they're, they're in a bad spot right now, Lindsay. And uh Hopefully things will turn around in the month of May. I don't, I'm not sure how or why they will. Cause I haven't seen anything that's made me believe that they're going to get any better, but it's a new month. We're going to turn the page and uh, hopefully some of the guys that are struggling down in the minor leagues will, uh, will, will continue to progress and make their way up. But right now, the one person, and I think you mentioned it earlier, if there was one person that you saw coming up to the major league level hitter or pitcher that might make a difference right now, it's who it's Matthew Liebertor. It's something, okay. it, it seems pretty obvious. Put him in the rotation, gives you another left-handed arm, gets you Steven Motts out of the rotation. And then from there, his improved stuff should be able to, to at least be competitive to the level of the rest of your guys uh, at the major league level right now. Okay. Well, the Cardinals start the month of May at home against Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, and company as the uh, Angels visit Bush Stadium. And you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Cardinals. If you haven't already, please give uh, both of us a, a follow on Twitter. You got Lindsay there at Crosby Baseball, me at JD Sports Radio. You can follow both of our podcasts, uh, Locked on MLB Prospects and uh, the Locked on Cardinals podcast on twitter as well subscribe to us on youtube we appreciate all of you guys tuning in Lindsay, thank you very much for uh taking your time out today and uh hope to catch up with you again here real real soon thanks for having me you're the best fans in baseball for a reason we'll see you next time on locked on cardinals